Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So, uh, I want to introduce my newest addition to my little world of astrophotography, uh, the EQ6R Pro from Skywatcher. I'm so excited. I've been uh, after this man for about a year now. I've um, saved up more cash than what I realised. And uh, uh, funny enough, my fiance thought it'd be a good idea to get it. So, uh, I wasn't reeled in. I pressed the button on it and um, I bought it. I feel like I'm the last one to get this away, you know, it's, uh, everyone seems to have one. Uh, anyway, I was going to do some sort of unboxing video on like a review on it, on, but it has been quite extensively covered, so I've decided to opt out on that and just generally compare this mount with my other mount, uh, what I've been using the last couple of years, and yeah, just maybe highlight the differences that I'm going to be working with, um, particularly uh, in this yard, some of the hurdles and gains. I've also uh, tested this out, which I'll cover later on. Um, I am looking forward to some clear skies tonight, so hopefully we're going to uh, capture M81 and it, M82, I do believe. Uh, I think <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. Wireless mount in particular. Uh, so it's a bit of a balance between my budget, the capabilities of it, or in particular what I'm wanting to mount. I'm actually wanting to put the Skywatch Spree 120 on there um, with some extras and I've, I've seen a few people using that scope with this mount. Doesn't seem to be a particular issue so yeah uh, that's the plan at the moment. And also just going off reviews. It hasn't been on the market five minutes. It's a couple of years in fact I think. In general I haven't heard anything major wrong with it. A um, few little issues um, but not deal breakers uh, as such but in general I've, I've, uh, it appears to be quite a, a popular mount within the astro photography community well first of all solid uh, same solid um, a great difference is quite different to what I'm uh, used to and uh, the other rig I'm just fling about the tripods they are both by Skywatcher and the one that I have been using it's uh, sort of generic tripod anything that's got a 3 8 inch threaded hole will fit on that this is more suited to this one and um, the stance on the new tripod is a lot wider than what i'm used to which is going to present a bit of an issue i think i'm not going to be able to push it to the back end of the yard so i may miss out on a few tags on that um, but we'll see that i might have a the workarounds on that one uh, i'm not sure yet so moving up the azimuth bolts um seem quite robust um, i'm used to being quite fiddly with the star venture when i pulled a line the other night really uh, sort of responsive um i was quite surprised uh, a lot different than what i'm used to and yeah it just uh, it seemed to hold pretty well the elevation adjustment clutch here i've heard that is an issue it tends to break and um, sort of spring loaded funny enough uh, a similar thing has happened to my staff venture, not so much the adjustment bolt, but the uh, the locker mechanism. It's a sim similar sort of spring loading mechanism, man. So it might be a sort of design fault. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, to be honest, not again, not a deal breaker. I was quite aware of this. But I think it's like with anything, you, you use it enough, you hammer it enough, it things aren't going to break. So I might I may have to just. Uh, Watch out for that and I'm going to have to either fix it or replace it somehow on the other mount. The RA and deck uh, sort of locking off uh, clamp slightly different where the star venture is more of a twist style locking mechanism but with the EQ6 it's uh, more of a, a clutch style. Also you can't see uh, through the pole scope unless you actually loosen off the decalation and twist it this way and, and then you're able to see through the scope itself uh, where if it's like that you won't actually see through where the star venture is permanently on view the illuminators are slightly different and uh, the illuminator is actually built in the uh, actual pull scope where the star venture the puller illuminator is separate bit of a pain in the backside to be honest um i've sort of like stuck it on there with some sticky tack one last thing that i'm not used to uh the last couple of years i've had to find and frame up my targets manually uh, can be quite time consuming if uh, especially if you're having an off night where this is a go-to mount i did a i think a two star alignment once i've done that um this thing was accurate so yeah i was quite impressed with that and this it, seconds 
took once once I got sorted where I could take sometimes <laughs> if I'm having an off night an hour uh, to like, find my targets and sort of find adjust to get them as centre as possible. So yeah, definitely yeah, uh, definitely a game changer with this. Setting it up, um, there was a few things I was putting in wrong. Um, I think the, the coordinates, the time zone was one hour. I was trying to put in the actual time and um, where I actually had to put the time zone in. So just uh, something to be aware of. So that's it really, just a little overview of the differences of what I've been working with and what I've got to look forward to. Uh, tonight, I uh, could say it's going to be its maiden voyage. I'm going to hopefully get a couple of hours, as long as the weather stays clear. I'm going to be using the William Optics Zenistar 61, so I'm going to swap them around. I've got to do a bit of jiggery poker actually. I've, I've only got the one dovetail, which is on here, but it doesn't fit on the Zenistar. Wrong screws and wrong screw holes. I have to sort of slightly dismantle my L bracket that's on my uh, Star Venture. Um, but yeah, needs must. I'm going to get this all set up, ready to go. And once I've done that, a bit later on, uh, well, obviously it'll be in a second um, on this video, but uh, a bit later on, I'll, I'll show you the test exposures that I took the other night. Um, I was quite blown away with it, uh, but we'll cover that in a second. So, I'll see you in a bit. Is well underway taking some uh, exposures um, I decided to go with five minute exposures I've gone down there I saw 400 I forgot about the moon um, it's quite illuminated so uh, yeah, it's quite bright out there but the, uh, the exposures seem to be all right to be fair and a few teething problems at the beginning were my fault uh, I forgot to put the correct time and date in uh, so Mount was doing some weird and wonderful stuff at first, but uh, yeah, once I realised what I'd done um, or hadn't done uh, in this instance, uh, yeah, it uh, worked fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the three test exposures that I did uh, the other night. I'm really surprised uh, how accurate this mount is, unguided. Um, I don't do any guiding yet, which will come when I get the bigger scope. Quite impressed, and you, you'll well, you'll see the images in a second anyway. So what we'll do is I'll just get them up, um, and I'll uh, take you through them. So I'll film these into Photoshop. I'll go to the first exposure now. Three minutes is typically what I will do on the Star Venture, so I thought I'd start at that. I have cleaned these images up a little bit, but at three minutes, <coughs> I was pretty impressed with that. As you see, the uh, stars are quite round. So I decided to take it further, uh, like I do with all my new gear, I'll push it to its limit to see what it's capable of doing. So I, I went up to five minutes. Satellite or something had gone through that image, but um, again, fairly round stars. But yeah, I was quite quite happy with that, so I decided to go up to, uh, go up to seven minutes. And again, uh, pretty round stars. That's a seven minute exposure unguided yeah this this is what you can expect from this mount well placed well placed with it i think it's worth mentioning as well that uh, these exposures were taken through my red cat 51 and um, obviously i've got the 61 millimeter scope on the rig tonight um but exposures seem to be all right at five minutes see how it goes we'll play it by ear if you're a subscriber to my channel and you, you watch my videos you probably notice that i'm my surroundings are slightly different. I've sort of took over one corner of my dining room here. I've got a nice desk. I think I mentioned it in um, my last video or something. But yeah, desk come, I've put it together. And it's, it's in the corner here with all my gear. Um, nice little setup. It's all in uh, sort of preparation in regards to what I want to do with the astrophotography. Here I've got the new camera I've got. It's going to get hooked up once, once I've so start all out and I'll be sort of close by to the rig and while I'm learning at least anyway I want to be down here. Alright, I suppose I'll just finish up with some my final thoughts maybe. I hope you like the video. Um I don't know if it's 
going to be of any benefit to anyone. I hope, it, hope it's helped, maybe. Um, I know I've been going on just sort of comparing the two amounts, you know, what I've been working with the last couple of years and what I'm doing now. But maybe if you're thinking of buying, about buying the uh, EQ6 RR Pro, uh, maybe you've been on the fence with it. Um, maybe this might be the sort of final decision factor for you. I don't know. I'm, I certainly do not regret buying this. Uh, yeah, over the last couple of days, I'm quite impressed with what this mount can do. I mean, I've gone from uh, three minute exposures with the Star Venture with a sort of slight uh, trailing. Um, you know, maybe I've pushed it to its limits with scopes. It works a lot better with just a uh, camera and lens. But uh, yeah, I'm now going to sort of five, seven minutes with the red cat on uh, the other night uh, with next to no star trail, and so it's definitely a, a game upper for for me and my little uh, astrophotography journey. So I think I'll just leave it there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the image at the end of the video, and on that note, please, guys, everyone, take care and goodbye for now.